Hi, I'm Senshu, one of Sokuzan's monks. Sokuzan offers his wisdom tirelessly with complete love and devotion. If you value these teachings, Sokuzan, the mandala of Sokukoji, please consider donating at sokukoji.org. Thank you. Working with addictions. Working with addictions, impulsive grasping at something. So as meditators, the first thing I would say to anyone who's working with addictions uh, is first meditate. Don't just count on others to help you. It's not that others can't help you. Very possibly, very possibly, completely possible. That's the only way you can get any help is from others. Is getting a therapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist or someone who is, or possibly another person who is working with addictions and has somehow dealt with that in a sane way. But you can also be aware, you can be aware of the way in which the body mind, let's, let's talk about the mind first, reaches for something. And the reaching is okay. That's just part of being a human being. You're going to reach for uh, a cup of coffee or reach for food, reach for many things. So the thing that makes it an addiction is uh, the demand, the demand for something. Uh, you want something, you want something, and then you start demanding. You have to have it. This can be conjoined with, uh, affiliated with, or secured by or supported by just the, the mental habit patterns. So you need to do that. You need to do that. You need to do I have to have that. I've got to do that. I have to have that. And it can go deeper into chemical situation where you're not only dealing with your wanting to do that because it feels good or sounds good or tastes good, but also just the, 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 the groove that you've cut into your mind stream supported by whatever it's hard to know exactly what it is that so because if we knew we could just well we just remove that sometimes we can't locate it we can't can't find out what that is uh through sitting practice of meditation there is no guarantees I'm not here to guarantee you anything it would be foolish i'm also not charging you a fee i'm asking for help i just asked a few moments ago but that's up to you you can come here as long as you want to and not pay a dime. My reason for doing this is not merchandising. I'm not running a store. Although we need to have stores because we need to have merchandising. But on, on this path of awareness, sometimes called the spiritual path, it also could be called a path of awareness where you're aware deeply aware of what is happening in your mind stream rather than leaving that up to others. As I said a few moments ago, you may have to leave it up to others. Your situation, your structure of your mind stream, shall I put it this way, your karma, which is a word, a Sanskrit word that means action, the causes and conditions that show up that give you this kind of a face or this kind of a nose or this kind of a disposition or this kind of irritability or this kind of difficulty catching on to things. or thinking you know everything. No space in your mind, but just the stuff that you know. Somebody else says something, you interrupt them immediately. Maybe not out loud, but in your own mind, you immediately start chatting and chattering to yourself about it. Not accusing you of anything. You know. So will looking at the demand help you looking at the grasping that is that has a uh, extremely strong tailwind behind it that it's just not reaching for something it's just something else is that tailwind is just pushing you towards that you you can even say you could even say you might even say you're probably saying i don't really want to do this what is it that wants to do this if i i don't want to do this this is dangerous this is harmful to me but something behind you some something is pushing on you. That's how it feels. Is that how it is? Not exactly. But that's how it feels. That's the ego language for how this feels. I couldn't help it. I can't help it. I had to do this. 
That's ego talking. What does awareness say? Probably, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. But we continue to look, continue to observe, so that we can get an idea of what the underlying structure is for each one of us. Each one of us might have a different activity in our mind stream and in our activity in our life that starts to look like a demand. We have to have it that way. I spent several years, and some of the monks that are here that have been here a while, spent several years uh, teaching in a, in a local uh, drug rehab facility. I won't say the name of it. It's now out of business, I think, due to various things, one of them being COVID three years ago. Uh, went in there for many, many years. Do you have any idea how many years we went in there? Seven or eight years? Yeah, several times a week. And talk to people, not about Buddhism, but how to use the awareness, how to use awareness training, meditation practice to, to work with addiction. And uh, I have a, I've done li literally hundreds of talks on where I don't even mention Buddhism or uh, probably don't even mention the spiritual path, but talk to people who don't have much interest in becoming Buddhists and I don't have much in, uh, interest in you know, um, forming some kind of a following. But awareness practice can help you uh, fundamentally in a, in a, in a, um, in a I don't know what word I'm going to use, probably the one I'm trying to avoid, but I'm going to use it anyway because nothing else comes up. Mundane, just ordinary way. How do you work with where you've gotten yourself into something and you're using something or doing something that seems to be so very habit forming? And you know it's habit forming because when you try to pull back, it dra it's like something reaches out of that and pulls you right back in. You can actually use sitting practice of meditation to help you with that might not do it for you, but it might help you see more clearly what it is that you are addicted to and what the nature of the addiction that so that you can actually see the way the mind stream is already reaching out before the hand comes out of your pocket. The mind stream is already reaching the mind stream might already be there and working with all kinds of advertisements about why you should do that, why you need that, why you should do why you have to have that have to have it constantly. Constantly reiterating, repeating, solidifying that reaching, that grasping, that shall we call it addiction. <laughs> Sitting practice of meditation, just sit down, hold still, and watch the movement can help you. Not a guarantee, but it can help you see the way in which you demand. So outside of the, or beyond the, the ordinary drug addictions, any other kind of addiction you want to bring up, whether it's chemicals or whether it's activity of some kind. You could say, you could say that some people who have to play golf several times a week, are, are, they have to. I'm not saying that that is wrong, but it could be addictive. It could be addictive to do lots of different things. Awareness, awareness, awareness is what, what will help you see what that is and possibly even help you to understand that in such a way that you find that you, you don't have to do that. Uh, understanding of that, the understanding of that will help you with the, the knee-jerk reaction that where I have to have that, I need to do that, which of course may be, have, as I said a moment ago, have the tailwind of, of um, of um, the ad addiction is supported through drug drug use. like what is the drug uh, that is so addictive these days that it's been given for painkiller to call mm -hmm. well, fentanyl uh, i don't know don't have any expert knowledge about that but it sounds pretty terrible uh, are there people still taking that legally it's still given for a painkiller and it works to kill pain, and then it also works to make you want that the rest of your life or for the next three years. Have you ever taken that? What's it like? 
Fentanyl? Yeah. Um, it's really a strong sedative, a little yeah. bit of euphoria. Yeah. Kind of a flip flop from your other opioids where by the time you feel euphoric, you're about. By the time you feel euphoric, you're what? You're about to probably, your central nervous system is shutting down. Yes. And it's still legal and it's still prescribed. For what kind of pain? I was prescribed it for back pain. For back pain? Are you still addicted to that? Well, I haven't taken it in seven years, but. In I seven years, that. but you still like some, wouldn't you? Yeah, but you don't do it. Why don't you do that? I, I don't know. You have no idea why you don't do that? Well, probably because I met you. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. So, and what did I tell you to do? Not do that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> So that seemed to work <laughs> somewhat, but also along with a really strong awareness practice. You practice a lot. You've been here for many years. You practice a lot. So, so it might take a little of this, a little of that. It might take a connection with a teacher or, or possibly with a therapist. That's also possible. The support of somebody who's worked with us a lot, who has had a lot of training. That's a possibility also. Real good one. Uh, also, the other thing that I haven't mentioned that I'll mention now is uh, uh, the uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, what's the other anonymous one? Narcotics Anonymous, 12-step. Yeah, 12 step. That's what I was getting at, some kind of a 12-step program. So may may be able to help you. Not everyone, but some people it's very helpful that actually stops them from doing that it might not deal with the other things that they're that they don't think are addictions take some questions go ahead Shoto bowing um something that comes up in 12-step groups is they have a saying where a little louder please to make sure people can hear um the only requirement for membership a little louder please is a desire to stop it's still louder it. can you speak louder speak louder in the 12 step groups yes they say that the only requirement uh, for membership is a desire to stop yes using. and i i could never i never had that desire to stop using is there a way that you see uh, that we could work with that same area more fundamentally a very good question so you weren't doing meditation then though were you no. so I'm biased, so I would say some kind of awareness practice where you can look deeper into the the danger or the the way in which your whole body mind, your whole life is compromised by this. And you could go on and go right into into your grave or into the in back into the elements without ever really getting an idea of who you are and what this is. So that that may not that may show up in twelve step program. Uh, it's possible for depending on the way in which a person is avoiding their life or is buying into or the, the addiction. So it might've been just too much fun for you. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so, and you found it was a lot more fun to be a monk and live in a monastery. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a thumbs up there. Further, any questions in here? Yeah, Bally, yeah. I'm curious about this tailwind that you speak of that comes with behind the desire and the grasping and the reaching. It seems that when it's met with what it's looking for, I guess that's my question is, what is looking for that thing to meet? I'm tailwind. not I'm not following your structure there. Okay. The tailwind I'm speaking of, there are several ways it could be talked about. One of them is just a repetition of it. Just getting, that's just a way that you deal with it. You don't feel so good, so you do this. You don't feel so good, so you do that. You don't see it feel so good, so you do, or you do, you fill up the space with something else. It's a simple way of saying it, but if it has a strong tailwind, then that could be the repetition. It could also be a chemical thing. It could, it could be a mental thing that's happening with how, how, how good it feels or something like that. But it also could be that, uh, you know, like in my case, my main addiction, I have a few other ones, but the one that I'd like to mention uh, is... Uh, uh, cigarettes. It was extremely hard to break break free of that, yeah. and it was it was just it just felt like you just needed to do that. You couldn't think about anything else. It was very very hard. 
So in my situation, it was also a strong meditator, but I wasn't really interested in quitting uh, initially. So I just kept going. I would try to quit and then it would fall off and then I would go back and then back and forth until I just kind of, I guess you'd say, became stubborn about it. Like I'm going to, going to do this. So, but the tailwind is just, could be any, any number of things, just the chemicals themselves, whatever they're doing in, the, in your body that we're not sure, um, like what, what the, how they function necessarily more. Well, when that tailwind meets what, what is being sought, it seems to just evaporate, dissipate. It's, maybe you would even say softens or, oh, it's not a problem anymore. But when it doesn't get what it, what it's seeking, there's just anything could happen. And yeah. how? I'm not sure. Yeah. So let, I'll tell you what, let's stop using the word tailwind. That's that's my I created. That. What do you want to know? That's that's more direct. What do you want to know? Well, I, I wanted to know what the tailwind is that you're talking about. Could be any number of things. Could be the chemical. What's happening chemically? It could be just the, the repetition. Could be the tailwind. Could also be the community of people you're associating with. Whereas if you were totally by yourself, might not you might be able to do this with just stubbornly opposing it. But you're hanging out with him or her or them or this community. That also can can push you into that situation. Community is really important. That's why Sangha is so important in this community, so that you will train your mind, so that you will be in a community of people who are what? <clears throat> Training their minds, no matter what. If you t start to say, well, I'll train my mind, but I'll live in a monastery, I'll be a monk, but if it's really hard, I'll just quit. You don't have that option here. I try to make that very clear to anyone who's ordaining. There is no reverse. There is no U-turn. Don't do this. I won't let you do this if I sense you're in doubt about what you're doing. That doesn't mean you know exactly what it is, but you do. You know, you're, everything knows. Your ego has an idea what you're getting into, but your ego thinks it will be included in your, uh, your awakening, and it will not. So I would say, well, I'm very biased. You should do this. More. Human bowing, is there a difference between a sane demand and an insane demand? Well, if you're starving, a sane demand would be for food. That's a sane, something you have to have. A sane demand is oxygen, please. Oxygen, more oxygen. I'm being a little bit foolish, but not totally. It's, you absolutely have to have it. You need to have that in order to survive. So it's more of a survival thing. If you're demanding anything beyond that, then that's a demand. And that could be addictive, but it could also be the demand could kind of run out. You demand it, you demand it, but then you see it's no point in demanding that. That kind of thing. See a lot of sober looks on everybody's face. Go ahead. What am I? Um, I wanted to look at the uh, habits of mind. It seems like there's some, so many things that we, uh, that I, um, yes, you can see on the cushion where my automatic reaction is just that, just so automatic. Is that addiction? To some extent, but the, the, the thing, the way you're working with that in the mind stream as a meditator is you're watching that, that as, as a trunk burn, but Jay used to say knee jerk, he borrowed one of our, um, images there that's a kind of a you just go for it you just go for it it shows up and you do something you push on it or you pull on it do something with it it is about observing it observing that and not doing anything with it don't cure the situation uh by doing something that temporarily works and you have a cover-up that can happen with addictions also like thinking that you've got this licked or whipped or you accomplished something just see the way in which you can't do it might get you closer to the underlying structure that, uh, that where you actually could pull a plug on something. Anytime you, as a meditator, uh, everyone here, whether you've been meditating uh, uh, 10 weeks or 10 years, uh, every time you return to the wall, to the cushion, sit down, hold still, you've just pull, pulled a plug on samsara for a little bit of time. So whether you can sit down, get to know yourself. 
You have to know what, how this mind works, how you push on some things, pull on others, how you interpret. Something shows up in your mind instead of receiving it as it is, which is the name of the first 15 minutes of this session that we're in now. This happens to be, what is it, the Wednesday night Dharma talk? I guess it's been for many, many years, changing its shape, its timing a little bit. But that first 15 minutes is just as it is. Sit down just as it is. Nothing else other than this. Nothing else. You could call it nothing else meditation. More? Well, Divine, a little bit different. Um, thinking right now when you were talking about uh, the first pure precepts, I refrain from all action that creates attachment. Yes. So is that attachment? Um, how is that a how is that the same as addiction? Well, being attached is being addicted on some level, but it might not something be something that shows up socially or uh, you know with your family or your community or with yourself that is a particular particularly a problem. You just something you like to do, just like I mentioned playing golf. You could stop. You're not hurting anyone. You might have a full time job where you support that, where you can pay for your own stuff. You pay for your vehicle and, and you can do that and you're you just like that you like that activity it's not incorrect it's not wrong it's just something that you really don't want to stop doing and, and you might not know if it's an addiction or not unless you were forced to stop maybe or maybe if you couldn't get around or couldn't stand up or had twisted your knee or something it might you might start missing that in some level more. And what is that first vow about then? Refrain from all action that creates attachment. To me, to me, that means be aware of the attachment. It doesn't mean the way it's said there, it just gets you to look at it. It's like, like I just uh, in the same fashion that I say, don't add, don't, don't do the math, don't subtract, divide, or don't add. You know, I know you can't stop doing that. I could not stop doing that. But I know that if I say that, that you will look at the amount that you're adding, look at the amount that you're judging or subtracting, look at the, the amount that you're dividing or shutting down or turning away from something or distracting yourself. You'll be more aware of how you're doing that. The, the, the time, the, the way in which on the spiritual path, the way in which you work with that is awareness. You're aware of that. It's very, very difficult to do. You can't just go in and turn it off. Some programs uh, that are more along the mundane path even spiritual programs that seem that profess to be spiritual paths are more about turning things off, stopping, stopping suffering or stopping passion, aggression, and ignorance. Mm. Can't be stopped, doesn't need to be stopped. It is pratitya samutpada. It's fancy words for it. nothing is separate anywhere. You can't just change, you can't take something and separate it from everything else. It has its own appearance as separation that is supported by what? Everything else in the room. And this goes on and on and on. Uh, and if you've read even a, a, a kind of a beginner's introduction to, to uh, what's that kind of physics? <laughs> Quantum. I never can remember because anything starting with a Q, it's hard for me to remember. It does start with a Q, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah, you think so. Quantum. Quantum physics, if you start to look into that just even a little bit, just an introductory book to help the layman kind of understand what that is, it's mind blowing to use the conventional expression. It's just, it's strange. Even the people who are experts at this, Niels Bohr or um, Einstein, I guess, and I can't name drop any more than that, but they go in and look at this and they're freaked out by it. And they know all about, supposedly, um, that it's just too, too outlandish to be true that something can be in two places at once, or something over here is co so connected with this, there's no interval between the, the inter interaction there. And just the whole idea of what's the word they use, entanglement. That will give you a headache just reflecting on it a little bit. But this is getting close to the spiritual understanding that Nothing happens. There is no death. Nothing, nothing comes to an end because it has not started. 
the great sages of the past down through the centuries, down to uh, the, the Buddha, on past the Buddha, into the Upanishads, and even further from things that were not written down, or if they were written down, they were lost. There have been beings who understand, realize what this is. And if they're able to, or invited, or allowed to, you could say, they, they teach it. Yes. In your mind, you often say to us that there's nothing to fix. How, how does that work with someone who has an addiction? No. I'm biased there. I say, just look at the addiction. But some people may not be able to, to do that. They might even hear me and say, I'm not going to do that. You know, as we just sit and look at a wall. <laughs> How many hours? I can say it different. How many hours? How many hours? Am I being silly? Yes. I am. Because it's not for everyone. But if you're listening to me, and perhaps this this message that I have for you may, I don't know if it'll make sense, but it may magnetize you in some way. And also may scare you away. Don't do anything unless you have to. Yes. When you're bowing, so is there an expectation that spending time gazing at the wall will somehow um, help our addiction go away? Sure, there's going to be that expectation. And we, you be, we will be looking for how it's going to make that go away. And with some people, it, it will. At least it'll put it in the back seat, or maybe in the trunk, or maybe uh, 30, 40 miles uh, in the past. Just like with, uh, what was your name again? You had, to, you had to look and check your name tag. Shoto. Uh, his, his, did you hear what he said? Seven years. So oh, I don't know, is it, is it gone or is he over that? Pro probably not totally. It isn't like uh, you would come back and say, you know, so Kazan, I think I'm kind of over this. I think I want to just kind of check that out and just see if meditation works. <laughs> Have you ever said that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. When you're bowing, so along those lines in, in somewhat a different um, movement, you, you talk about what brought you into this path yes. was your intense anger. Yes. Which is that a type of addiction as well? I, I think it is. It's, it's things get difficult or you start to become afraid of something and you, and you can't cover up fear by just putting your hand in front of you. You can't cover up fear by finding some area where the fear will go away. And so you might get enraged and it can happen in microseconds, it just part, just this happens, that happens, and that happens, that all happens within less than a second and you're mad. And how do you work with that? You have to see how it works. You have to see that arise so that you can cut it off at the root. And, and it's not an actual cutting. It's a seeing, you see it so clearly that it doesn't mean that the, the fear isn't there, but something is there. And it, it want, we want to stop that. We want to cover that up. We don't want that anymore. We may go towards anger, be enraged. We may, we may go towards uh, just dismissing it and forgetting it. And shut. We may have some kind of a function in our, in our minds that allows us to just uh, actively ignore something, shut it out, go not look at, at it anymore. Go ahead. So, you mind, so just in looking at your example in Shoto's, uh, you say your, your anger hasn't gone anywhere. No. And Shoto uh, told us that he's, he still has a desire. So did you? is that what you said? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, you did say that. So I don't have a desire to be angry if that's where you're going. I, I'm looking. What's the what's the differentiation or the process then? The, the, yes. What happened to your anger? Ah, uh, I don't know. You get so, angry sometimes. Yes. Well, there's just that one time. <laughs> When's the last time you saw me angry? <laughs> Go ahead. Jump right on the bus. 
Yesterday. <laughs> okay, yesterday. We'll say yesterday. And what uh, what did I do with that? Cave. Okay, what do you, what do you mean by cave? You don't fuel it. So, so anger may arise, but it can't find anyone who's angry. Dependent origination is like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this is the only way you can understand it, but it's the way I see it. Things arise. They are none of your business. You feel it. You smell it. You taste it. You feel it under your feet and you feel it everywhere. But it's unreal in that it cannot find a, an individual who, who will take that or or push that away it has no reality to it it is an illusion not a delusion it's an illusion it's unreal the very thing that arises in your mind stream has no grappling hooks it can't find anybody to hang on to so therefore it wears out that doesn't mean it doesn't show up and then gone but if you think it shows up and it needs to go if you have any agenda about it it's it's more like you don't care if it stays there forever you're not going to act on that anger. More? When you're bowing, so not acting on the anger, then is that something that you no. will to do? No. It, it just, is it dependent origination no. as well? It is it is dependent origination, but it is dependent origination where the belief in a solid being who can stop something, start something, be with something, like something, have any positionality on anything that that individual, even though there's still a body mind here, the the awareness is to use the simple word has transcended the polarity that that functions as me here and you over there. It's called non duality Advaita. It's not something I invented. It's just something that I have studied over many years and have and am not have uh, am, am looking at all the time. I couldn't teach if I weren't looking at that. I, as I sometimes say, I teach out of what I see, and I don't see anyone else. But since you think there's someone else, then I meet you where you're at, in the shit that you're wandering around in. I'm not trying to pull you out of it. I'm trying to get you to take a good whiff of what you're doing to yourself in your life. More? When you're bowing. You're going to accuse me of something pretty quick? <laughs> So for those of us who haven't studied for 50 years or done all the things that you've done in, in your Shambhala yes. days or exactly. Yes, yes, what, 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 what? So what hope is there for us? There, there isn't any hope for you. You don't need hope. You just need to sit down and do this. You don't need, you need no guarantees. You need no hope. You just need to sit down and look at your mind without comment. Which is what this as it is meditation. Sit down, hold still, sit symmetrical. Because since the only say so you have about this, the mind is through the body, sit symmetrical. Watch the movement of the mind until you eventually realize your true nature, which is consciousness only, but not consciousness, uh, uh, the individuated consciousness as a body mind, a particular body in a particular lifetime with a particular birthday, a particular anything particular. More? Take us all the way in there. When you mind, I'm still looking at the anger that yes. you have or had or wherever, and, and the example Shoto brought forward with the desire yes. still for that, that addictive chemical. Yes. How can, you know, how does meditation impact it, to, to put it in a, as simple a way as I can, you're, you're slowing down, you're sitting still, you're just observing what arises in the body as a feeling, in the ears as a sound, in the, the, in the nose as a fragrance or a smell or an odor, in the taste buds, all of the six sense fields and their objects, including the mind, in, the, in seeing whatever's in front of you, just receive what it, what's in front of you, not what you think is in front of you. If you. That's why we gaze at a wall. There's not much you can think about this. There's not much you can name except uh, a wall. So there's the, the, that particular area of consciousness is open and on receive. There's a dimension between your eyeballs, the eye, or the visual organ, 
and what is being observed, the object, and the consciousness that is operating in terms of visual awareness. So you're opening that up. That's why we don't close our eyes when we meditate. If you close your eyes and you meditate, you might feel better, but you won't realize your true nature. You might feel better for a long time. That's very convincing to do a Vipassana meditation. Many people do that. Not against it. Please do whatever you want to do. It's not, it's not like it's wrong or bad or that you won't uh, attain your true nature. Perhaps you will. It doesn't look like it to me, but that's just how it looks. More? So I have a, one here from Mahesh. Mahesh says, is it Mahesh? Let's see. Yeah, uh, Mahesh Bowen. So he says, is there a practice you recommend during the daytime when we're not sitting, like focusing on the hara or listening to sounds or etc. The only thing I would recommend, uh, if you're having difficulty, if you're struggling with yourself or struggling or having uh, difficulty with anything emotionally or mentally, um, you could uh, ground yourself by, by returning to how, how your body feels and, and how uh, go alternating between one of the five sense fields, how this feels, how this looks. I was just talking to Robin earlier today about this very thing, about how, just receive how, how it looks. And then before you go into a naming or analysis of it, move over to how this feels. And then go, and that's the sequence there, or the frequency is up to you. And then you can go back to how this thinks, because that's that's the situation that you need to get used to, is the thinking process and realize it's not much different than the sense of seeing, sense of smell, sense of taste, sense of touch. It's just receiving the object in that particular kind of consciousness. It gets uh, some kind of special attention or, or regard in some areas, but not here. It's just, you might as well be smelling something. You're just receiving. You don't think. You don't. Th you don't really think. There's some aspect of that that is uh, pushy, but not much. Not as much as uh, as you think. Oh, you think. My So, yes. so during the day when we are not sitting, uh, I'm trying to look for a practice that I can do. Uh, let's say when I'm driving or um, um, or any other doing any other activities. So got it. Got it. For just receive. If you're driving, if you're walking down the street, if you're talking to your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your family, just receive, just listen, 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 see, just see, just receive in the, uh, rather than allowing the seeing to go off, to uh, trigger you into some kind of thought process. The thought process is constantly trying to take over and tell you what you see, tell you what you smell. And it's not that there isn't some accuracy there, but it's a relative accuracy that is not necessarily going to be supportive of the spiritual path before and in the zen tradition it's before enlightenment before awakening chop wood carry water but after awakening chop wood carry water so nothing happens if you think something happens in enlightenment then good luck <laughs> keep going because nothing occurs nothing oh. there's no there's no occurrence to it go ahead sir oh my going so how do i know that i'm not caught up in thinking like if i have an object like let's say focusing on the hara or as you said uh, listening to sounds um, then i know when i'm actually listening to the sounds or i'm caught up so i can go back to listening to, to the sounds so should we use something like of that sort like listening to sounds as a means or uh... yeah well somewhat the idea is if you alternate between them then there's less likelihood that you're going to get caught up in what the thoughts mean or what the sounds mean or or what you're looking at a table across the room before you can even la label it a table, uh, which was an intentional rhyme, intentional rhyme, uh, or label its color red, or label uh, a, a, a fragrance, a lilacs, or label uh, anything. Before you do that, you go to another uh, sense field and just very soft, gently go back and forth between them. And notice, if you if you can, notice that that which is aware doesn't really care which sense field it is. That which is aware doesn't do anything. It just receives. R awareness produces nothing. Unless the body-mind complex, including the six sense fields and their objects, is engaged in a social entanglement or structure where you're very, very aware, you see exactly what you should do, and which may mean nothing. You, mo you just won't do it. You won't make a decision. If you realize your true nature, if you realize who you are, uh, with the traditional word is if you become enlightened, which I, uh, I don't use that because you don't become anything. 
becoming something is uh, that's uh, that's we'll leave that to Jean Paul Sartre and uh, whatever that philosophy was he worked up. Uh, Mahesh Poing. So, how, like, how often should we switch uh, between these senses? Like, uh, let's say, is it, is it like uh, every minute or so, or like? No, oh, no, no, no. Just, just right away. Just uh, maybe on every. If you want a relationship, just on every breath. Every, every breath that goes out, seeing. Every breath that goes in, feeling. You could do it with the breath. Uh, it's uh, similar to the Tonglen practice, but not with the same goal. And you just go. Use that or don't use or make it that similar frequency, but don't use the breath at all. Okay. So, and, yes, go ahead. Oh, Mahesh Bhavan. So what is the difference between noting practice and this, like Vipassana noting practice, where you're noting the, the sensations versus this way we are moving? Similar. Moving. Similar. Uh, if you're talking about uh, Vipassana, it's similar to that. But uh, Vipassana is eyes closed and more about... Uh, uh, soothing and being more peaceful and coming to a goal where you're tranquil and peaceful. Uh, I, I don't, I, I'm not saying that's not a valid approach, maybe, but I'm not interested in it. If you're listening to me, I want you to see reality yourself. I don't care if you become a Buddhist or if you ever even talk to me again. I, I would like you to see what this is. You see with it, see, see, smell, taste, touch, think. Everything, all everything. Those senses are not different from each other. They just look like it. Be the situation that you are trying to get rid of. That's a good start. Go ahead, sir. Sort of bowing. How does uh, an addiction conceal reality? Bowing. Well, you're pretty busy <laughs> trying to get to the drug dealer, or you're trying to get a prescription, or you're or you're you're taking the drug and your mind is going. <laughs> Doesn't yours do that? Yeah, see, so I nail on the head. Uh, how are you going to see reality if your mind sounds like a comic strip? Yeah. Further question? <laughs> you do have one? Go ahead. So is there some relative stillness that has to be observed to see reality? Listen to me. Stillness is a concept. That's all you need to think about. Reflect on that. Stillness is a concept. It's a concept. There is no stillness. There is no movement. These are unreal, vividly unreal in emptiness. You have to see it. And don't, don't believe me. I might be lying my ass off over here. I'll do anything to help you, including lie. Monica Bowie. Uh oh, Monica, <laughs> I'm in trouble um, now. So I, I was thinking what's common to all addictions beyond the biological um, pattern that's being induced by each substance that's different across substances. One is for cigarettes, alcohol, whatever. Um, and you mentioned that often that you lack a point of reference or referentiality. I'm, I'm paraphrasing now, and I was wondering if, if the um, lack of reference is is the key to to undoing an addiction. Like I was a smoker. I I totally relate to how hard it is to um, undo an addiction. But instead of being stubborn, I actually kind of stuck with it and looked at it and saw the lack of reference, like how that, how that self is created constantly, that needy self is created. And the, seeing through this, the fact that it isn't there helped, but then it's another self, needy self, and another reference is created, a different one. So it seems like there's an endless production of potential addictions. Is there a way to, I don't know, see through the fundamental uh, commonality of all of those addictions, the, that re referencing, like what is that re constant referencing that happens that triggers the addiction? Belief in a self, even if you see it's unreal. You believe in it, you believe in that, then you're going to have a reference point or it's called duality. It's uh, 
one of the best things you can read and study. If you haven't, you should. And that would be the 30 verses of Asubandhu, written, uh, I don't know, 1,500 years ago, something like that, or maybe more, more than 1,500. That, that has a, it's, it, there's lots of translations of it. Look at that, read that, study that. He uses concepts to point at exactly what you were referring to there. The way you use concepts, I think that would be helpful to you because someone who is really good, and it's not a compliment, but yeah. someone like you uh, who is good at thinking, and uh, parsing things out in that way, that would be a good thing to dunk your head down into. Thank you. Asabandu. Go ahead. More? Bowing. Um, yeah, it feels like there's more. I, I can't quite formulate it right now. So I can say it simply, and you'll either understand what I'm saying or not. You, you will not know if you're awakened. There's no one left. You, you will not know. You will not have, there will be no proof of anything. Excuse me. Yeah. You won't know. I could take a final question, and then we'll close, and we'll go back to... Uh, uh, maybe I'll take two. Sensu bowing. <clears throat> if someone sees through the self, could there still be addiction? Yeah, but there's still the body could still be addicted, but there might be uh, a, a a better ability to to work with the addiction and find a way to to you know find another way away from it. That might take some time. Excuse me, but the, the 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 imaginary self wouldn't be supplying any uh, um, any ammunition to the front line, so you would get no help from the ego. Excuse me, it would be not it wouldn't be there anymore. It'd be under, if it was there, it'd be a, like a clown on the roof. It would be of no use to anything, to any addiction. Uh, there's a question from Tom McCauley. Tom Bowling, how do you work with an artistic pursuit where a tornado of production and the elaboration of thoughts seem like a necessary, enjoyable, even addictive aspect of the process? Be addicted to it. The way, you, the way you were characterizing that, I don't know what you do, but do it until it runs out of steam. I'm not here to stop artistic production <laughs> at all. So do whatever whatever it is. And what I would, what I would say on top of that is also meditate a lot. Meditate, find some time, set, set aside. You don't have to be a Buddhist. I think it helps. I think it's a good idea to have a traditional path. It might be, a, uh, maybe it's not necessary for you. I don't know. I don't understand you, not met you. I don't know your karma. I could tell you if I met you, I don't read minds. I don't need to. Everybody's hanging out everywhere. Go ahead. I'm Dobine. Uh, as a therapist, I... Uh, You're a therapist? Yes. What kind of therapist? Whatever the client needs. Well, very clever of you to say that. Uh, so I, I like the, to broaden the understanding of addiction. So often it's uh, stigmatized with substance abuse. Yes. And it seems like most of us are addicted. We're addicted to our uh, thoughts and behaviors. And yeah. so with the second noble truth, like or, um, the cause is desire. Yes. Is that in and of itself addiction? When we desire something else over and over and over again, Bowing? It's something, it's an area that needs to be looked at as a, 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 the Buddha's Dharma. Uh, we need to look at that, <clears throat> look at the grasping, look at the, at the re repetition happening there. Yes. Are you uh, saying addiction can be more than just a biological addiction? Mm -hmm. how, it depends on how you mean biology. One more. Go ahead. Shoto Bowing, in light of your talk tonight, how could someone like Trump or Rinpoche drink himself to death?
Do you know that he did that? I do not. Is it rumor? Yes. We have to be very, very circumspect or cautious about jumping on any kind of a bandwagon of any conclusions that are trying to get some kind of result out of something without really looking at it closely. You no, know, he was a, I, I would not be here if it weren't for him. So you can't, you can't take away everything he did. He fulfilled his karma exactly as he needed to, to do it with dependent origination. He donated himself to the, to the Western world. From the time he got here, he donated himself. Not just, I think I'll do this for them and I'll do this for them. No, he gave himself totally to it. So much so that he, he uh, didn't survive it. He physically died at the age of 47. And there's no praise, no blame. But there are there's all kinds of people who were fundamentally served by his dedication, his uh, donation. You don't get to say, you, you don't, it's choiceless before you realize your true nature, it's choiceless because you are a slave of your karma. You're a slave you're, you're of your addictions. You're a slave. It might feel like freedom because of, I'm going to go do this or do that. No, you're, you're, you're a slave to that. And if you realize your true nature, then you are a slave to saving all beings, no matter what, no matter how it looks, no matter how, how it shows up as, as a bad press for because you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. Please ask me another question or wipe that look off your face. <laughs> you ever, did your mother ever say that? To wipe that look off your face. <laughs> Mine did. Thank you. You're welcome. You understand it? You understand what I'm saying? It's dependent origination. There is no choice anywhere. And also it doesn't mean that you're fated to do things. That's that's uh, more. Uh, that's just buying into a concept about it, so that you don't have to look. Well, it's just fate. Well, it's just predestination. Well, 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 well. More. You started it. Let's finish it. There's another question there that I cannot answer. I cannot respond to. Let's put it that way. Unless you ask it. And I can't ask it. I can't. I don't know how to ask that question, but you do. Chiro Bowing, is it possible to cover up who we are? For a while. It's possible to cover that up for a while. Yes. You have a certain however many years on, on the, the ball of dirt in the middle of nowhere. And you stumble into these teachings. What's next? Is there a next? Go ahead. Is that cover up a dependent origination? Everything is dependent origination. This makes sense, does it? Mm -hmm. It won't. It will never make sense. It's not sense. Just like the, the um, what, the, what kind of phys physics is that? Quantum. Yeah. yeah. Quantum physics uh, doesn't make any sense. It does not work. It doesn't make sense. But there is apparent proof, scientific proof, that it's, it's the case, that there is no location. A location is a, an, an illusion. I'm not saying this as a a quantum physicist, I'm saying this is a meditator. I'm looking at it. It's an illusion. Really powerful one. Okay. So we'll go back and meditate till, till eight o'clock. Is that true? Then we have um, evening chant. Don't will tell us evening what we're going to do. I don't know. Since we changed the schedule, I have no idea what's going <laughs> We'll return to sitting. Sit for until about um, 740 and then we'll begin evening service. Okay, so there's going to be an evening service. If you, uh, I can't, there's 39 people on here. Three people have left.
when I, they didn't get the answer they wanted. <laughs> so anyway, please uh, hang around if you have not attended an even, evening service here before, and then you can never come again. You have to come to at least one. This may be the one, or you may need to go play golf, go bowling. What do we do next? I don't know what to do, but we're supposed to do something. <laughs> well, um, stand and dedicate the merit. Oh, dedicate the merit. Okay, I can do that.